Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be going over how to create this scene here using the Jack Frost Winter Asset Pack. If you do not already have this pack, there's a link down in the description below. Here in the background we can see the scene that we are going to create. We're going to create the icicles here, set them up along the banisters, and also add a snow shader on top of all the objects. Notice that we don't actually generate any physical mesh and all of the shaders are procedural, which means we just apply them to the material. To get started with this tutorial, I'm going to be using this cabin model here. The cabin model itself is based on this blend file from BlendSwap, which was originally made for the internal render engine. Here, however, I've converted it to cycles and if you'd like to get it, there's a link down in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add in our model here, then we're going to select the camera and go over to the camera settings and set the focal length to 50. This will give it a bit more of a cinematic look. The next thing we're going to do is press GX, um, Alt R to get rid of rotation, then RX 90, RZ minus 90, and then we're going to move it into the correct position. So here I'm going to be adding icicles along the top and down these sides here. In the original file I also had them back here, however I'd been using depth of field to just focus on these front ones. And that means that the back was already blurred out and you couldn't really see them. So in this case we're just going to create icicles on the front. Right, so here I'm going to press numpad 0 to go into camera view, G and Z with the camera selected and then we're just going to set up our frame nicely so that it's looking in between here. In this case, I'm also going to press um, GY and then GX to move it forwards. Okay, so we just want to line it up so that our camera has some sort of framing around it. Here I'm going to press GZ so I can slightly see the top and then um, GX a little bit more. And um, We don't want to go above this either. Alright, so that is looking a little bit better. Now the next thing we'll do is set up the um, depth of field properties. So if we go over here to the depth of field, I'm going to choose an f-stop of 2. And then the distance here, we're going to choose limits. And then um, just set the distance to where the icicles will be. Okay, so that should be fine. If you'd like to see it in the viewport, you can um, select f-stop here, press N. Uh, and then go down to depth of field, which we probably need to be in textured mode for. Oh, and in camera mode, there we go. Uh, depth of field, that's what like a preview of what it's going to look like. High quality if you want it to be more accurate. Um, yeah, up to you. I'm just going to leave it off. Again, back to solid mode. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the icicle, um, which will be suspending from the top. So here we're going to go to layer 2 do that just by clicking here. We're then going to press Shift A and add ourselves in a cylinder. Here we're going to press Tab to go into edit mode, A to deselect, and then we're going to hold down the Alt key and select this ring of vertices here. Then we're going to press Control B to bevel and scroll up a couple notches. So something like that. Then S to scale it in. Make it real small, and then S said, scale it outwards. Okay, so here I'm going to hold down Alt again, right click just to select that inner circle, enable this, press S and scroll in. Cool, and then we're going to do the same up here, so hold down Alt and right click until you get the whole loop, then S and scale it inwards, and that's going to be the rough shape of our icicle. Cool. We just need to press Ctrl E, add ourselves in an edge crease for the subdivisions, and then here Ctrl R and scroll upwards um, to give ourselves some loop cuts. Double click to place them, and then we're going to go over to the modifiers, back to object mode, and here we're going to add ourselves in a displacement and a subdivision and another displacement. Cool. So first one here, new texture, texture tab, I um, guess we'll make a new one, select clouds, 
that's fine, turn it down to 0.15, go back here, I'll set it to like 0.1, down here, um, set it to 2, this one here we want to have a new texture, so let's go over to this one here, um, displace 001, we want this original one, right, okay, this one here to clouds, set it to 0.15, and then the second one here we also want um, maybe a little bit smaller, let's just do 0.1 for now. Okay, so that first texture is this one here, and the second one is this one down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it down to 0.05. We should be getting something that looks like this. We'll also select smooth. Um, if you're in 2.8 and uh, you've enabled pie menus, you should be able to press Z and then choose shade smooth, but I think it's on the top left hand corner. Um, anyway, this is going to be our main icicle at the moment. Looks pretty good. Um, the next thing we need to do is add a little bit of variation to it. So as you can see, it's all sort of piled up with the um, same circumference. So here what I'm going to do is again, um, hold down Alt, select it, S, and just scale it inwards because um, icicles form by just dripping water on top of itself like wax from a candle. So we need this end part to be really, really small. Cool, so that is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and call this icicle. Icicle, that is a tricky word. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a material. Um, here what we're going to do is use the ice material from the Jack Frost asset pack. So here, basically just create a new material, make a new window and go into the node editor. Then we're gonna press N to get rid of the toolbar. So here I'm going to go to File and then choose Append. We are going to navigate to the most recent release of Jack Frost version 1.2, go to Shaders, and we're going to select Ice. We'll then choose Node Tree, Ice, and Append. Then the next thing we'll do is press Shift A. Under Group, we'll select Ice. Here we'll add it in. So at the moment we don't need this one here, so we can press X to delete. Um, I'm going to turn this down to 10 because it's quite a small object. And then in the density, we're going to change it to 0.35, just because that looks sort of good. Here you can get a preview of what it will look like. No density, it's a bit more like glass, and with some density, it gives it like a little bit of a waxy look. Um, the glow here is how much of it is sort of displayed as this color. Um, at the moment, I'm just going to leave it how it is, but I'll set the melt here to be 0.85. Cool. So melt, when it's set to 1, basically just means that it's really, really shiny, and set to 0 means that it's like really, really frozen. Okay, cool. So now that we've set up the material, that was it, that's all we need to do. Um, we are going to make some variations of this one here. So Shift D, G, Y, give it some rotation, do it again more rotation, maybe rotate a bit this way, and there we go. Okay, so we have some variations of it. Here I'm just going to scale them um, accordingly, and one other thing we should have done before we do this is change the origins. So I'm just going to quickly um, go ahead and do that now. Basically just go into edit mode, A to select everything. Actually, probably easier just select this, shift S, cursor to selected, Go back to object mode, and then set origin to 3D cursor. So we should have done this before we duplicated all of them, but um, I guess we have to deal with what we have at the moment. Cool, so we've done it for that one. Shift S, cursor to selected, do it for all of these. I guess ideally I would, um, yeah, let's just delete these last two because we're lazy. And do that again, hey, way easier. Okay, cool. Uh, and last one here, GY. Some rotation, that one needs rotation too. All right, um, let's make this one a bit more interesting. Scale it down for sure. Um, but also let's add some details here. So we're gonna scroll in, hold down Alt and Shift. Oop, and nope, just Alt until we get a line and then Shift for the next one. Here I'm just gonna scale it outwards like that. It'll give us a bit more interesting shape and do the same cool and maybe one down here and just move it in 
Great, and let's do it for this one as well, and then we should be good. Uh, one loop here, whoops. Um, Alt until we get a line, and then Alt and Shift, and you want to select the um, lines between the vertices to get the loops, like that. Okay, and our S, and that's looking good. Cool, so we have all our different variations. Here I'm going to press B to box select, and then Control G to group them. Um, let's type in icicles. There we go. Now the next thing we need to do is we need a particle system to place these. So here I'm going to press Shift A at a plane, GY, so we can see what we're doing. Tab, select these two by holding down Shift, Alt M uh, at center, this one too, Alt M at center. And then here we're just going to hold down shift, select both, W subdivide, set it to 10, W subdivide, set it to, yeah, around about four should be good. Um, we shouldn't need more than that. All right, so this is our particle system at the moment. Let's go ahead and add one. I'm gonna make this one full screen again. And here what we're going to do is we are going to add a new particle system, choose hair, advanced, uh, we want vertices because there's no faces on here at the moment. Um, let's not use random, so it's a bit more evenly distributed. And then when we scroll down, we're going to select group, and here we're going to choose icicles. Let's just deal with what we have here. So I'm going to turn up the size. You can see um, what it looks like at the moment. We have 1000, which is way too much. So let's set it down to like 50, or maybe even less, maybe like 40 and turn down the size as well. Then after this, we'll select random, turn up the random size for some more variation. Um, maybe a, not too high. Cool, and then set that one down to, yeah, maybe around 0.05. Again, it depends on the scale of everything. So yeah, just whatever looks good. Cool, so the next thing we need to do is make sure it's rotated correctly. So we want it downwards. Uh, we're going to select rotation and then we're going to choose global Z. Is it global Z or global Y? Might have been global Y. There we go. Um, we can press RX. You should see that they stay um, facing downwards, which is cool and is what we'll use for these beams here. All right, let's go ahead and place these. Alt R to get rid of rotation. GX and GY. And I'm just noticing my viewport's lagging a little bit. So here what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, no, we'll just go over to layer two here and we'll just make some of these modifiers invisible. There we go, subsurf is probably the biggest one here. So back to layer one, here we'll select our particle system, GX and numpad seven, numpad five, here G to move it, and um, SY to scale, GY, uh, and then GZ, because you want it down like inside the banister and then S to scale again, cool, and GY, if you want it in the center there. All right, that's looking pretty neat. Let's go ahead and turn down the size again until it looks a bit better. Cool, numpad zero, see what we're looking at. That looks great, SY, um, and maybe turn up the random if you want. You can move it down as well. Okay, next thing, Shift D to duplicate GZ, um, and then RX to rotate it on the X axis, uh, and then GY to move it into this banister, RX a little bit more. Then numpad zero, go back into camera view. Here we can see it's looking fine. So again, Shift D, GY, and then RX. Cool. If you want to, you can move them around just like for a bit more variation if you're really worried about it. Um, yeah, up to you. All right, so that is everything set up. Now we just need to add snow on top of our scene and then it'll be ready to go. So um, here what we're going to do is again, select uh, this hut here and we're gonna add snow to all of these materials. Again, let's make a new window on the vertical, there we go. And choose node editor. Then here we're going to again, append in the gravity snow shader so here I'm going to go to File and choose Append. Then this time we're going to back out of ice and here we'll go to the Gravity Snow, select it, Node Tree and Gravity Snow, Append to Library. Okay, Shift A, 
go to the group and this time add gravity snow add it in cool and here what we're going to do is just turn down the smoothing to 1.25 and then the next thing we'll do is set the snow melt to like roughly 0.05 this just means that some of the snow has melted and um, 0.6 for the roughness uh, maybe 1.25 for the sparkle and everything else looks pretty good so let's just connect up the displacement here and we should have a good result cool so there we go all of that sorted out now the next thing we need to do is um, do the same for all these other materials so here I'm going to select it press Control C to copy go over here Control V to paste and just drag it in do the same here Control V to paste and this one here Control V to paste now notice they have a number here this one has four which means there's four users of the same group node this means if you change one of them that all of them will update so you don't have to worry about going into each material and changing it so now that is sorted let's go over to the render tab here we're going to select GPU if you haven't already that sampling should be fine then we're going to scroll down to performance and here we're going to change it to 256 by 256 and then we'll also turn off the hair BVH also under geometry we'll do the same and everything else should be pretty good I'm also going to turn down the um, resolution here and then the last thing we need to do is set up the lighting for our scene so here I'm going to select the lamp we're going to choose a sun use nodes like five we don't want to have really harsh shadows so here I'm going to set it to roughly 0.25 or maybe even 0.5 uh, and then we're going to press alt R and then RX um, actually RY and then I'll set it a little bit okay so we just want um, the Sun sort of beaming in that way to light things up then the next thing we're going to do is add in an HDR so I'm sure you've heard about HDRs environment maps for lighting a scene so uh, again I'll leave a link down in the description if you really need to but yeah just throw whatever um, environment map you have in there it should be fine here I'm just going to select environment map and then click open and here I'm just going to select one of the random ones I have so open image all the default settings are fine then the next thing we're going to do is um, press numpad zero and just close that there and we're pretty much ready to go so let's go ahead and press F12 and see what we come up with so one thing I would change um, is going over into the scene settings and we're going to go to color management here and choose filmic just so you can see it's a little bit like smoothed out and then um, usually I find that medium high works quite well so that is looking pretty good the only other thing I'd change would be the density of each of the icicles here so what we might do is press escape um, select one of them on layer 2 and then maybe just turn the density down to 0.3 so they're a little bit more see-through okay so the last thing we're going to change is just how straight the snow is here so you can see that it's almost just like an extra mask on top that doesn't look super realistic so here what we're going to do is we are going to go back to the 3d editor here we're going to make a new window go back to our nodes uh, and then on this node here we're going to connect the displacement here so that was one thing I forgot we will need to do that for all of these ones here that will just make sure that we get on the edges of the snow some variation cool and then if you want to have more variation then all you need to do is go ahead and turn up the sparkle scale maybe to like two you can see that will increase that amount especially for smaller objects like this cool so apart from that um, let's go ahead and give it a final render and see what we get Um, you can see on the sides of the snow we now have a little bit more variation so anyway hope you enjoyed the tutorial have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next one